you know, I thought uh, just a little bit of a recap from Saturday from the scrimmage. I, I thought, you know, I thought our veterans really were dialed into, you know, kind of what we were doing, what we were trying to do, the way we practiced, the way we scrimmaged. I thought it was good Saturday for a lot of our younger players. You could feel a little bit of uh, excitement, um, a little kind of some unforced errors early on in the scrimmage. Uh, and then they, they started to kind of settle in and start to play the way they had been practicing, which is why you need to scrimmage. You got to put guys in some uncomfortable settings and then they got to learn how to get comfortable in those settings. So uh, that was positive. Uh, obviously we have, we have two weeks to go or, or six practices to, we just finished up the, the last of six. So we got five more to go. Um, you know, we're just trying to be really intentional with our approach every day that we go and, and what we're trying to accomplish and why we're trying to do certain things, um, whether that's on offense, defense, or special teams. And um, the goal is to continue to push the guys. You know, spring ball is obviously a unique time of year where there's no game, right? I mean, there we have our spring game, but there's no real opponent at the end of it. So everybody has got to be really intentional in their approach to what they need to do for themselves uh, to continue to raise their level of play and whatever that looks like. It could be knowledge of the system. It could be um, fundamental or technique. It could be um, you know, how, to, how to recover physically so that you're prepared to go again the next time so that we can continue to grow individually and then ultimately our team is better you know, at the end of 15 practices than we were at the start of the whole thing. Coach, who are some of those veterans, like you're talking about, that maybe surprised you in stepping up with their you know, vocal leadership or lead by example? Um, I don't know if it's so much of a surprise. I think we're, we're pretty intentional with some of the guys of, of what they do and how they do it. But I think Jordan Whittington has definitely um, kind of stepped into that role uh, offensively. I think Quinn has done a nice job and is, and is getting more and more comfortable in that role. Uh, I think JT Sanders offensively, those are, those are a few guys. I think defensively. You know, Jaron Thompson definitely feels like kind of like one of those guys. Um, I think Byron Murphy feels like one of those guys. Um, so, you know, obviously I'm, I'm just kind of naming a few. I think Baron Sorrell has, has grown up that way. And a lot of those guys, it's helpful for them because they've been with us now. We're good. They're going into year three with us from the beginning. So they're very comfortable with the things that – they know are, are meaningful to us, that are important to us as a staff, um, and they've learned now why it's important. And so they can, they can kind of be that conduit between a younger player and ourselves. And a lot of times that carries more weight coming from a player than it does coming from a coach. So the more those guys um, can support that message, uh, I think the more impactful it is on our team. Can you talk about your depth on the offensive line and is Connor Robertson back from his wrist? Uh, which one do you want me to answer? Oh, well. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry, Chip. Okay, so the depth on the offensive line I think is very good. Um, it's probably the most depth we've had since we've been here. Um, you know, clearly we're relatively young at that position. Um, and it's hard, it's hard to say that when you're returning five starters. But the reality of it is, you look at our last two classes, we've signed 12 players in the last two classes on the offensive line. And so that, that youth is good because I think we've got a hungry group that is competitive and we're able to go three deep and feel very comfortable doing that. Um, but I do think that the returners, the, the Christian Jones, the Jake Majors, the Kelvin Banks of the world, their comfort level, the Hayden Connors, their comfort level in, in, in showing the younger players how to do it, I think is beneficial. Um, Connor is, is still rehabbing. He's not back on the field yet. Sarge, when, uh, what kind of spring has David Benda had? And, you know, in, in this era where players have freedom of movement, how much do you appreciate guys like David and, and Keaton Crawford, fourth yeah. and fifth year guys that are willing to stick it out yeah. and fight for jobs in the 2D? Well, I, I, think, I think David's had a, had a good spring. But I think it started for David in winter, right? Um, I think he had a good winter conditioning. Uh, I thought he was, he was very intentional uh, in his approach not only from a physical standpoint in the conditioning aspect of it all, but also in, in, in getting with Coach Choate and digesting the scheme and, and what it looked like and, and how we wanted him to play. 
um, and is showing up. You know, he, he is playing, he's playing good football for us, probably the best, we've, best version of David Benda that we've seen to go along with a Keaton Crawford. I think this is the best version of Keaton Crawford. He's still doing what he's always done on special teams. He, you know, he blocked a field goal Saturday, um, which is what we always expect of him is the special team stuff. But um, what he's doing in the secondary now um, is very comforting to know that a guy can grow into that position. And the beauty of it is with those guys, they've earned their opportunities. Then now they're getting their opportunities, and, and they can be a model for a younger player who, living in this world of instant gratification of they show up and why aren't they starting now, well, here's two prime examples of guys that have grown into a role um, and have worked at it to, to now contribute to the team. And so, hey, I, you know, again, we're very appreciative of it because we invest a lot in our players you know, from the moment they arrive. Um, and so when they stick it out one year, two years, three years now in their case, uh, and now they can reap the benefits of the work they've put in, the investment we've made in them in, in all capacities of life, um, I think it's a win for everybody. Coach, you talked about the importance of live reps for running backs, um, especially during the spring. Uh, what did you see out of those guys on, on Saturday? And did, did any of those guys in the group stand out to you? Yeah. Um, I thought Jaden Blue had a, had a nice scrimmage, made some plays, especially kind of on the perimeter. He's a very explosive athlete. Um, I thought Savion Red, from a, from a position change standpoint, um, shows physicality that uh, is really encouraging. You know, Savion has obviously played receiver a year ago, and we know he's gifted as a receiver, but to really start running between the tackles, which is kind of what he did in high school, is kind of a wildcat quarterback. Um, that, that's been encouraging. And I thought for said Baxter was good for him. You know, his first couple plays were not plays that he's going to always, you know, say those were my best plays at Texas. He kind of struggled early on, but then settled in and, and made some plays as, as the scrimmage went on. So Friday, when we get back out there again in the same similar format, is going to be big for him to take that step of, okay, now I'm comfortable with what we're doing and, and then start to see more of him of what he's capable of doing. At the beginning of spring, I know you mentioned you wanted to see what the edge position offered during these practices. What have you seen, and how much do you have to temper what you see with the fact that they're going up against Christian and Kelvin? Well, I mean, I think that that's, that's a I – don't, I don't like to temper anything. You know, ultimately our job is to, is to beat the best teams that we play on our schedule uh, and ultimately put ourselves in position to compete for a championship. And if you're in that role – they probably got good tackles too. And so I do measure it against what does it look like when they go against those guys. And so, you know, whether it's, whether it's a Baron Sorrell, whether it's an Ethan Burke, um, whether it's a Jamon Tapp, a Justice Finkley, a Colton Vosick, whether it's when we can get some of the linebackers to the edge and what they can do, um, I, think, I think ultimately we do measure it against those guys. And I do think they're all improving and growing. Um, but I do think our defensive staff has done a nice job of – of, of doing, of putting some new wrinkles in to create opportunities and create some one-on-one -on -one rushes, um, and guys can can kind of show what they can do. And so, hopefully, our youth can continue to grow into where we need them. Whether, like I said, whether it's a Chris Ross, a Jamon Tap, a Burke, a Vosick, those guys are all talented players. And how far can they take it? That's what we have to find out here throughout the rest of spring, summer, and then fall camp. Where's Jaden Blue made the most? progress and what next step does he need to take? Well, I think, I think naturally for a young runner, um, w when you come in, is how much can you learn from the guys in front of you? And I thought that um, when you look at Bijan, when you look at Roshan, and then you look at Keelan and his approach to it, I think there's a level of maturity that those guys played with. And I think Jaden really has matured in, in his time here. Um, where it's not always just about one play. It's about an, a complete body of work, game by game, scrimmage by scrimmage, practice by practice, and, and then growing from it. And some mistakes are going to occur, but then how do you reset and recalibrate and then go do it again the next carry or the next route or the next protection? And that, that for him, I think, is where we've seen a ton of growth in him, and that's what's needed, you know, I mean, because every run is not going to be – beautifully blocked with a huge hole and it's a gain of 50 yards. Sometimes you got to go get a dirty three or four yards and get back in the huddle and try to go do it again. And I think that's the level of maturity that, that we're looking for from him. Coach, of, of the new receivers, have any formed like a particular chemistry with a certain quarterback? 
Like this guy's working particularly well with Quinn or this guy with Malik? Not, not right now, no. We're, we're not at that point. I mean, spring ball, we roll them pretty good. We're trying to learn them. Um, we're trying to learn the quarterbacks, learn the receivers. They're learning the system. They're learning each other. Um, but I do think, you know, they are naturally progressing the right way um, and feel very comfortable with them. And ultimately, it's, it's going to be come the fall, finding that right combination that's best for us when we take the field. So, Sorry, just in terms of personnel, groupings on offense, is spring where you like to figure out, okay, we, we want to be a you know, primary 12 personnel to offense or 11, or is that something that you feel like maybe just constantly kind of evolves? No, I mean, I think in spring right now, we are we try to get as much of our offense kind of on the table as we can. Um, when we come back in fall camp, the first couple weeks, it's kind of the same mentality. As we get into the second half of fall camp, who are, what is our strength, right? Who are we as a team? Where are we best? Um, and then where can we be better by, by personnel groupings? And then it goes game by game. You know, there's times when, you know, hey, 11 personnel is better for us this week. We're capable to be in 12, but 11 is better. The next week, hey, 12 is really good this week, or 21, or 20, right, or 10. And, and that's the beauty of, I think, our roster right now. I think we're very flexible. And, um, again, I think we've got the depth at receiver. I think we've got the depth at running back. I think we're talented at tight end. Um, and I think we've got really versatile players. I, I don't think we have one-dimensional players. And um, hopefully we can be creative enough offensively to, to do things that can um, put our players in position to have success and that the quarterbacks can really understand schematically what we're trying to accomplish. Steve, I know you're not going to tell us, but at the end of spring, do you like to have an idea of your depth chart you know, going into the fall camp, or is that something you want to determine later in fall camp? Well, I mean, I, th I think you'd like to have an idea um, of remotely where you're at, um, but I also, like, I meet with every player at the end of spring, and I like to tell them where they're at. If we were playing next Saturday, this is where you would be on the depth chart. That doesn't mean that's the end-all, be-all. Here's what you need to do to work on to either keep that spot or what you need to do to earn that spot that's in front of you. And so we like to have an idea, and, and mostly so that we can keep the players to be honest and realistic with them of where they're at and then what they need to do moving forward to become the best player that they can. Coach, Mark, with Will, Will Stone, Burt Auburn, what are you seeing out of the, the, the kickers you know, in practice? Yeah, I mean, I, I think definitely you see the consistency of Burt, um, you know, kind of carrying on just kind of from where he was from a year ago. Definitely, you see the talent and the and the leg talent out of uh, out of Will. Um, again, we'll, we'll really dig deeper, dive deeper into that in the summer, and then into as we dig ourselves into the fall. Uh, but it's a good problem to have. Um, you know, when you, when you have a couple guys that have have experience and have talent, and then they get, there's an open competition that way for them. Hopefully, that that brings the best out of them. Mo Blackwell is a guy who was at safety, and mm -hmm. how's he? developing, where is he taking a step, and what yeah. what next step? Well, I think he kind of can fall into the category of a Keaton Crawford, a David Benda, same thing. Year three, uh, majority of the work that he had done was on special teams throughout his career. But I think we saw glimpses of him last year on defense where he made some really big plays for us. Um, we kind of put him at that Sam linebacker position, made a couple critical stops on uh, you know some third down, some fourth down plays. And so... Same thing for him. I think this that maturation process, not only mentally, but I think physically his weight is up. Um, I think his understanding of the defense is, is at a better place today than it's ever been. But we're not losing sight of the value he brings to our team on special teams either. So ultimately, um, like, like a lot of these guys we're talking about, their, their process has been one where maybe it was an immediate impact on offense and defense, but they helped us on teams. But now going into year three, what kind of impact can they have for us, you know, on either side of the ball? Is there anybody like uh, maybe Michael Taff or even Jed Bush from the walk-on ranks who have really kind of stepped up from that group during spring? Um, not yet, not yet. Got time for two Coach, last ones? Coach, in the last uh, two years, there have been a lot of moving parts in the roster. But this year seems better footed. So are you feeling more, more fun this year? Um, well, we had quite a few moving parts in December and January. Yeah, so I think it's just... Because of the portal, things are happening quicker now with your roster, um, and I, you know, I suspect we're going to have movement. I'm not, I'm not naive to the, you know, just the landscape of college athletics right now and college football. You know, I, I watched 
LSU's women basketball team win a championship the other night with nine transfers, nine new players on their team. So the reality of it is we'll probably have some movement at the end of spring, um, going and coming. Uh, I don't know exactly what it's going to look like yet. You know, I don't know if play, some players have made decisions or not. Uh, but ultimately, that, that's the time that we're in nowadays. And so I'm, do I have fun? I have a blast every day. But um, I do think that we have to, you know, be realistic to the landscape of, of, you know, college football right now. And we've got another portal window, window about to open um, that, um, you know, obviously, we need to, that's why we have the meetings with our players to talk to them about kind of where they're at. And then we need to monitor that portal conversely, if, you know, because you just don't know who you're going to lose. And then if you lose too many at one spot, you better have somebody that can fill that void uh, so you don't go into the season depleted somewhere. Coach, that, that cornerback position opposite of Ryan Watts, how's that looking and what, how close is that coming? I think we've got great competition at corner. Um, I think at both spots. I think Terrence Brooks has really, you know, kind of taken his game to another level. I think Gavin Holmes is performing um, – at a high level. I think Ryan is, is doing what he's doing. I think Xavion Bryce is playing good football. Um, we've been moving Austin Jordan around. Jod A is a versatile player. So we're fortunate. Um, I think that the, we, you know, the, our coaches have done a good job kind of evaluating and recruiting that position. Um, and again, I think competition is healthy for everybody. It usually brings out the best in you. Last one, Jeff. Sorry, from the, you know, I know you mentioned the talent at tight end. Have you seen enough from from Gunnar Helm and Juan Davis to feel like you know that you'll have really good depth there by the time. Yeah, I, I, Gunner, I think Gunner again going into year three played a pretty substantial amount last year for us in combination with JT. Um, I think Juan, um, the first you know kind of three weeks of spring has played his best football, has shown the best version of Juan Davis that we've seen. So um, again, we have the addition of Spencer Shannon coming in the fall. Um, so again, you know. As, as you work through it, you just want to be versatile enough. If, if, if you have to play with two tight ends, we can do it. If we're going to play with one, we can do that. If we, can play with, if we have to play with none, we can do that. And so that's constantly what we're working towards so that everybody's comfortable in their role uh, in the organization.